So just something simple here. What I want to show you guys is um, the uh, the now we're going to go into the note length and MIDI trick that I wanted to talk about. So rather than recording a long sound, we're going to want a short. We're going to want make a short choppy rhythm here. And the way that I like to do this. So if we go, let's get out of Serum for a second. I'm going to move my long note over and just put it aside for now and come back in here. I'm going to make this. Uh, put it on 16th notes and let's make it just one bar, actually one beat just to save time. So now I'm going to go into here. Let's go down. There. And now uh, if we're in 16th notes, this is what I want. And here. So I just want to make 16th notes. And then what we're going to do is just duplicate the piece to make it bigger, glue it together by hitting four. And then what I want to do here is just make them a little bit, um, I'm going to make the timing here so they're just a little bit shorter and not overlapping with each other. Um, and go back to 16th notes. So if we listen to this, all we have is a basic cha-cha-cha. That's a little loud. So nothing is happening. It is just um, playing the 16th note straight. So this is the great thing that is um, in Cubase. And you can also do this using some Max for Live uh, controls I'll describe for Ableton. But basically what we have here is in this MIDI modifier section, if we activate it, what we can do is we have some, this is just controlling the MIDI. So we have our transpose. So we can change here, which is convenient when you want to just change the octave without going into the synth. Now what we have here is in this section, this is the random controls. And each random control has a minimum and a maximum. So if we put this on the length, and then we put the minimum down a bit and the maximum up, what it's going to do is it's going to randomly select um, values in between negative 30 and 78 here. If you think about these numbers don't actually mean something coordinated to the time you have to think about, you have to divide it. But anyways, um, 30 is like a half shorter, 60 is like um, a doubling. So this will make some short notes that are shorter and some notes that are longer, if we listen up. So as you can see, we're getting different notes. Now, if I make this a lot shorter, we're going to get more shorter notes. If we go down here, you see now we're just lot really short to shorter than it is there so we have to, have to go into the positive range but since this is lower we're getting a lot of values under less higher now if I pull this up so you can just play around yes just to quickly tell this to do this if you put the note length so you do 16th notes in in Ableton and then you put the note length MIDI plugin and then you put a stepped LFO um, like a sample and hold LFO onto the gate length of the of the note length device. Um, so that you can do with the built-in things in Ableton. The one thing, the next piece here is that we're still getting a lot of notes coming through together. So the next thing I want to use is the MIDI insert here called Density. For this, if you have Max for Live bundles, um, it's not in, I don't know if it's in one of the bundles, but if you just go online and search density, in fact, I, I have it and I can post it, um, but it's just a density thing. It's basically this, a slider. Um, and so here, what this density means is it's just going to each note will have a probability of being played. So at this, if we have it at 10%, each note here, each 16th note will have a 10% probability of actually coming through. If we have it at 100%, then every note will have 100%. So let's just start going down on it and we'll see what happens. Oops, activate it. So now you see that we're getting empty space come in. If we go up here, not a lot. Every once in a while one comes through. But if we go down here, say 20%, now we're only getting a few coming through. 
And so if we just go back to... So we're getting a random pattern coming through on its own. This is just before focusing on the um, the patch there. Again, this is like the most simple patch you could do. Anything if nothing's actually happening here. What we're focusing on here is generating the um, unique um, patterns. And so what you could, another way to do this, obviously, like if I were to just come into here, we could, instead of doing this note length stuff, right, we could make our own thing. So we could just be like, all right, make this one this long, make this this long here and let me turn off the maybe like a little more but so we could be doing stuff like this right where we're writing in our own pattern and so we're making some notes longer some notes shorter each one playing on their section and some of them not playing right so we could do something say like this right now if i just i'm just going to loop this one section right here um and uh, turn off the density and stuff so we just hear this one section. So. So you get that similar type of pattern, but we had to write it. And so if we wanted to make this, you know, something varying throughout the track, we would have to come up with this. And then every time you're writing a track, you have to come up with a new MIDI pattern. Sometimes you'll have a sound where you know exactly what you want it to sound like. You're thinking about it in your head. Um, you know, you hear, new, new, do, 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 bow, whatever, something. Um, but, you know, you don't want that to then repeat all the time. Every Or every time you make a sound, you don't want to do that. So this is why I love doing this uh, random trick, because you can allow, if we, so if we then back, turn this on. You know, you let the machine do some of the work. And, you know, one of the things I, I love this about, I think Psytrance is great because you can, it's kind of like controlled randomness. You don't have to write and put every single sound together, um, but you can, you know, using techniques, let the um, complex things emerge from the computer um, by just using controlled randomness. And so thank you, um, Nikhil, for sharing that. Yeah, I guys, I had watched the thing, the, the Jump Street thing. It does seem very cool. Um, and there's a few different ones. There's also called Mono Sequencer, uh, Mono Seek, I think, um, for um, Ableton, which is a Max for Live plugin, which is also great. You can apply the same MIDI modifier type controls, but you can also do it to... Um, some other parameters as well, including uh, scales, which we can also do here. Let me just quickly show you. We also can put, if we wanted to do, we have the um, pitch and then also velocity. Velocity can be nice if we put the velocity down. So you get some that are lower, um, but here, one thing that we have to do, yeah. So now we've got our velocity going. And if we were to put this to the say level, it's you're getting movement here now this can be really nice too because instead of doing that if i bypass that we can then use some of these this velocity randomness to control some parameter of here so let's choose if i were to choose a different um let's just show you something real quick let's use one of these random ones so we could be using the velocity here, which is being randomly controlled to control the wave table position here. So another method for getting some random control here, which is really nice. Um, and then, sorry, I'm just catching up on the, yeah, so thank you guys for sharing that. Those are great tools for Ableton, which is, works a little bit differently, um, but, you know, it's really it's really great, and you can do these same types of things. Um, 
I'm not sure if those have the density, but if you get, oh, the probability ARP, there you go, because that's what you want, is you want a probability control on the actual, um, on the notes, so then you can remove some. Because if you think about it, if every single sound we have in our track is, is running at like 100%, it's going to be really full but if you say have two or three sounds that are each running at 20 percent then you can have this call and response come into um to into play and you know you're leaving some negative space we can go ahead and we'll do that right now so what i wanted to then show is um since we have these random note lengths and random things coming through on our pattern here we can then use the in the matrix here I'm sorry, first of all, we'll go to the, okay, sorry. There's different ways to get some sample and hold um, type things going on in um, Serum. So one of them here is, okay, yes, I will work on that. So one of the ways here we can do a step thing is if we were to go into here and if I'm hitting shift, right, and I'm just clicking and we can make like steps in here. So I'm gonna turn this off for a second and um, we're just going to, just to move this this thing around. Let's grab a different one too. Give me one that sounds nice and we'll turn off the FM. Yeah. I'm just choosing one of these. I'm using, um, these are from the virtual light thing that I was mentioning just trying to get some kind of I think we're really low in the octaves here yeah so usually what I do is I put these to the um, first octave and then I use the controls over there um, in the MIDI thing to move them around so let's see So this is what I wanted to show right here. Just if we're doing some um, wavetable, so we're gonna move the position around, right? And maybe not this one, let's see. Where's the basic ones? Ah, here we go, this is what we want. So, um, yes guys, these are uh, source code FM4, sure. We Wait, there, ha, <laughs> I just clicked that one. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, Great minds think alike, I guess. So this is a great one here. And as you can see, we're scrolling through. These Vince did a great job of making these scrolling wave tables that have different um, things. So what I want to do is I want to automate this here. As you're seeing, we're just moving this around. So one way to make step random would be to make this kind of step thing here and then put it onto this. And then as we're, we have to put the timing to the right level and... Um, going but see this is going to play from the beginning here at each time up oh, so let's go play through here and put it on a division that will but it's going to be on a time division right so this isn't going to quite work the way that we want because it's going to be on a each time and we have our notes coming through at different things so i don't like using this because what we want is we want a real um random right so the, there's in you have these chaos ones, which we can sync to the BPM here, right? And we can go into the matrix and choose this chaos one, put the death, the destination. We're gonna go just for the wavetable position here and turn it up. This, um, so now, I'm gonna go back over here. So you can use this chaos around, oh, let's go sample and all, here we go, there we go, and put it on to say 16th notes, or 8th notes, so we get, so it's going to be moving around here, as you can see, on quarter notes, let's go 16th. So this is moving around, but again, it's not doing it on each time that we hit the note. So uh, what I like to use is instead of using these um, these ones, the chaos here, so instead of setting source as chaos, if we use this note ons, right? So note on random. This is going to give a random amount um, every time that the uh, 
a different note is hit. Oh, one thing I forgot is I'm, gonna, I'm hitting my keyboard and it's not going because we have the random um, MIDI modifier. So I'm hitting. So if you see here, each time I play my keyboard, we're getting a different value here. So this is a really nice effect because then for each note, and also if I hold one note, for example, it's going to stay the value. We're not going to get another random amount while that is out. But then I hit it again, and each one is different. So this is really great for getting each individual MIDI note to have a different uh, value. So, and let's turn up the density a little bit more. So each time we get a note, it is going randomly. So now let's we have two of these. So we're gonna put the second one onto the filter cutoff and go note on two randoms. So it's just a slightly different version. And so now we're moving this guy around. And let's see, we've got our delay. So already, this is kind of a nice sound going on. You could put it on 100% and play once. Yeah, so I have it now, it's on 64. So again, if we if we put it on to 100% here, or for example, let me just put it on 20. If we just turn it off and we mute it. So that is 100% notes coming through. And then and now here, if we turn it on, we're getting these empty space. Now, We've exhausted both of our two randoms that are on the note length. But so, as I mentioned again, you'll see that I still have this velocity moving around, which is also being random. And so you're seeing that this one's moving. So this is nice if we wanted to have, say, a third um, amount, like say, we still have the second oscillator coming in and the FM amount could be there. So let's go ahead and we'll route this to the FM amount. So now, each note is also getting a random value from this velocity control here. And then we just want to set how, where we want it to be. I'm getting a very metal-y sound here, but just to show the purpose of it. So as there's less FM, we could probably put it like this. There we go. So we're seeing it move around here. And now every single note is going to be different and have a big variety of sounds. So now what I want to do here is I'm going to show you, we're going to make a second one right after this. And um, I just, we have, I want to show you how you take this from this piece, right? And go into, you know, to putting it to audio. So the first thing here is we have our, it sounds nice with this ping pong delay and reverb. But what I want to do is I want to render it. And since we're having random pieces, some of these notes are going to be in great places that you didn't think to put it yourself when you're making one, but sometimes it's going to be in the wrong place. If we have these delay tails, um, you might have the tails overlapping onto the next note. So if you've dialed this in and it's exactly the way you want it, you could just, you know, go and just record this through. But if you want to um, have a little bit of more um, flexibility afterwards, what I like to do is just record it dry. So I'm just going to turn off our effects over here. We also could just turn them off here. But so I'm turning them off, so now we have the dry sound. Okay. So we just have our different randoms moving. We can also, again, play with this here to get the values that we want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the beginning. I'm just we're going to record this through um, the way that I showed you before. Let me just make my whole loop here. So we're just going to record onto the record channel and let it play. Um, just that's a little bit too thin. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up the density to say like 40 percent just so we have a little bit more notes coming through and I can show you because um, we want to get some wrong ones here for this purpose. So let's go back and do that again. Wrong channel. Got to uh, record this one. All 
All right, that's perfect. So now I'm going to mute this, and I'm going to just, as I said, I'm going to bring this down to a new channel so it's not on our record bus. I'll just put it up here so we can see. So now what I want to do is we just want to go through this and just see, did any hits come on places that we might not actually want them to? So if we listen here, now let's put on our frequency. And then we can just put on a delay here. Um, again, we can just use, say, the built-in ping pong delay. So it's similar to what was there. This is eighth note dotted. Um, so I like most of it, I think. What we can do is um, we actually can just leave that for one second. And I'm going to make a, I'm just going to record a second one um, with a slightly different thing. So we're going to go back into Serum here. Let's open it up. And let's just, you know, kind of choose. Let's make it a little bit of a different kind of sound. Um, so let's just to make it something different. We'll just grab a random different wavetable here and see what happens. And we can then put this to... I'm gonna just make it a, like a saw with a sign. Sorry, we're playing, we're listening to the other one. Just to get a little bit of a different sound here. So different kind of sound. And maybe we can put this to a band pass or a high pass or something. just to get a kind of different sound here, right? Different. And it's still on the density here is, and these things are basically the same, but we can, you know, change them around a little bit if we wanted to, um, just to have something slightly different. And so now I'm gonna record this again. Go down to here and let's record a second. Now we have the second one, and we then, same thing, let's put it onto a new channel, and we'll put these two together. So let's say Serum 1, Serum 2. Okay, so then what we wanna do is just go through and you know I take away the ones that we don't. Oh, I'm gonna also put another delay here, and let's do a slightly, let's put on our frequency just to take out the lows. And we're going to do, I'm going to use the H delay again. And this time I'm going to keep it. So we have one ping pong and then we're going to have one non ping pong. And we can maybe put it on like a quarter note dotted just to have a different timing. And so we have two channels that are both. So let's see, we have this one. That's kind of a lot. So here, let's put on a high pass, and low pass on this. So we have that, and then we have the bottom one. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of like looking at these two channels together, we wanna get rid of the ones that are overlapping with each other, first of all, and find any ones that we don't really like where their placement is. So we have a pretty decent thing of these ones overlapping each other or not overlapping each other, but um, some of them are. So we can just go ahead and like delete these parts here. Um, and see, then these ones are on top of each other. It would, and then let's see, those all look pretty good. This one, they are on, so we have some empty space in between them and they're kind of bouncing back and forth. Then just quick thing is to just put a tiny little fade on this guy. And now if we listen together. So the top one I think has too many. Take a few more away. Stereo delay too, so 